Hi, my friends. Welcome to a new episode of our series, History of the Church. Today, we are going to continue talking about the cults, or what is commonly known as the New Heresies. In the middle of the 19th century in the United States, another cult started to arise, which is the Seventh-day Adventists. The idea of the Seventh-day Adventists and most of their beliefs are centered about the second advent or the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The idea started basically in the year 1831 via a captain in the United States Army. His name was William Miller. William Miller was doing several Bible studies and during his sermons, he was basically uh, promoting the idea that the Lord is coming very soon. And he made some calculations uh, based on the prophecies in the book of Daniel, and he estimated that the Christ was supposed to come again to, to earth in the year 1844. Then after his death in the year 1849, one of his followers called Ellen G. White would continue uh, to lead this newborn cult, and later on she would become the uh, main prophetess of this cult. Ellen G. White was a former member of the Methodist Church, and she joined Miller's cult and group when she was 12 years old with her family. Now we move to talk about some of the facts of the uh, Seventh-day Adventists. In the year 1860, Ellen G. White founded uh, the Seventh-day Adventist and she changed the name that William Miller used to use, which is the Sabbath Keepers, and she used the name that is uh, commonly used today, which is the Seventh-day Adventists. Their headquarters uh, are in Silver Spring, Maryland, in the United States. The number of followers around the world are about 19 millions. They claim that they have like 78,000 churches and more than 69,000 companies. About their major books, they have their own Bible translation, which is called Clear World Bible or CWB translation. In addition to some other books written by Ellen G. White, like Testimonies to, to Church, Steps to Christ and the Great Controversy. And these books are considered as inspired books for the Seventh-day Adventists of today. They do missionary work through two organizations. One is called ADRA, Adventist uh, Development and Relief Organization. And the other one is called ACS, Adventist Community Services. And they exist in 216 countries. Now we move to talk about some of the history of the Seventh-day Adventists and what are their beliefs. To answer that, we have to know that Ellen G. White claims that she saw so many visions, uh, around 2,000 visions, between the years 1844 and 1904. These visions constructed the basic and the major uh, beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists. For sure, we were not able to go through the whole 2,000 visions, but we will give some examples. We will give four examples about some uh, visions which are reflected and projected in their beliefs of today. For example, her first vision happened in the year 1844 when she was 17 years old. She saw um, Advents, specifically 144,000. They were going to the heavenly Jerusalem. Those uh, 144,000 were all sealed and perfectly united. And uh, on their foreheads, it was written God, it was written New Jerusalem, and there was a glorious star containing Jesus' new name. A second vision she claimed to see in, when she was 20 years old, in the year 1847, she saw the Lord Jesus Christ ministering in the holy place in the heavenly Jerusalem. And she saw the Ark of Covenant was opened and the Ten Commandments were shown. And she saw a light striking the Ten Commandments but the, four, the first four commandments shown above all the others and specifically the fourth commandment shown above every other commandment. This uh, commandment is talking about keeping the Sabbath and that explains the dogma that Seventh-day Adventists by keeping the Sabbath and considering Saturday as a holy day. Another vision Ellen claimed to see in the year 1858, she was attending a funeral of a small kid and she claimed to see a vision she called later on the Great Controversy, and it was like some kind of a battle or a conflict between Jesus and Satan. And this uh, kind of vision, the Great Controversy, is also known today in the literature of the Seventh-day Adventist 
as a conflict of ages. Later on, Alan G. White would start writing a manuscript for a book holding the same name, and this book would later on become one of the inspired books for the Seventh Day Adventists. Another vision she saw about Doomsday, she claimed that she uh, saw this vision in the year 1904, and she said, and I quote, I saw an immense ball of fire falling among some beautiful mansions, causing their instant destruction. I heard someone say, we knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know that they would come so soon. Now we ask a question. What are the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists? Adventists, if you search on the internet or if you meet someone, they will give you, or you can find on the internet, a book called The 28 Fundamental Beliefs. This is the core beliefs that they claim they have. If you go through those 28 fundamental beliefs, you will find nothing different than a normal Protestant denomination, which can cause some confusion. But if you want to dig deeper in the writings of Ellen G. White and the Clear World Bible Translation, you will find the following. You will find that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael. They believe that several visions came uh, to uh, Ellen G. White about the second coming of Christ. For sure, they consider Ellen G. White as the, the main prophetess of uh, the cult. They also believe that the human spirit is not immortal. They consider Saturday as the holy day of God. They consider that the dead are asleep and unconscious after they die. They believe that there is no eternal hell. Now we move to talk about some of the practices of the Seventh-day Adventists which re reflect their beliefs. They believe that Saturday, as we said, the holy day of God, so they keep observing 24-hour sunset to sunset, Thabas, uh, starting Friday evening, like the common Jewish tradition. They do other baptisms and they consider the kids are dedicated to God. They practice communion four times a year. They do not eat pork or unclean meat or shellfish, uh, as stated in the book of Leviticus. And the church the, of the cult promotes uh, the uh, vegetarian lifestyle, and they also don't smoke or even drink alcohol. Now we move to talk about another cult which is uh, considered famous in the United States and all over the world, which is Jehovah's Witnesses, and sometimes we uh, confuse ourselves between the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's start by talking about some of the facts related to Jehovah's Witnesses to explain and clear uh, this kind of confusion. Jehovah's Witnesses was founded by Charles T. Russell in the year 1870, and he is considered the founder prophet of uh, the cult. Headquarters uh, are located in Brooklyn, New York, United States, they have around 8 million followers all over the world. They are existing in 240 countries, and they claim that they have more than 118,000 congregations. They have also their own uh, translation of the Bible, which is called the New World Translation Bible, which or NWT. And they have two famous magazines. One is called Watchtower, and the other one called uh, Awake. They have a school of missionaries uh, that was established in the year 1943. And uh, Jehovah's Witnesses claim that they uh, minister door to door uh, yearly more than one billion hours. So if you find someone knocking at your door, holding the Bible and wants to speak with you about Jesus, basically uh, those are Jehovah's Witnesses missionaries. Now let's go through some of the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses started by Charles T. Russell as a Bible study group when he was only 18 years old, and it was called at that time the Bible study movement. He promoted in his sermons that there is no eternal hell and Christ's second coming will be invisible. In the year 1879, Russell started publishing a religious journal called Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence, which would develop by time to become the famous uh, Watchtower Society and Magazine. 
Between the years 1880 and 1904, Russell made some prophecies according to uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that the end of times would happen in the year 1914. He also claimed that he uh, knew the Greek language and based on his knowledge, he was able to make some calculations based on the prophecies um, in the book of Daniel chapter 9 and the book of Ezra chapter 7. Again, he claimed that the kingdom of God uh, on earth would happen or start in the year 1915, followed by a millennium reign, and then Russell died in the year 1916. Later on, between the years 1950 and 1961, the New World Bible translation uh, was published. In the year 1969, the President Nathan Knorr prophesied that the Battle of Armageddon would occur in the year 1975, in addition to some other historical events. Now we ask a question, what are the major beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses? Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus Christ is a created being. Yes, they call him the Son of God, but for them he is less than God the Father. And this is going with what Arius said in the 4th century and was fought in the Council of Nicaea in the year uh, 325. They also reject the deity of Christ and they consider uh, Arius as one of the great Christian leaders. They reject the doctrine of Trinity, they reject the bodily resurrection of Christ, they reject the personality of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit for them is just a force or an activating power. They reject the idea of eternal punishment. They also believe that there is an actual heavenly government uh, ruled by Jesus Christ and 144,000 chosen, both from the earth. They will rule over the earth after the cleansing of the earth from all wickedness. And the earth later on will be inhabited by many millions of God-fearing humans. Now we move to talk about some of the practice of Jehovah's Witnesses which reflect their beliefs. Jehovah's Witnesses do not salute the flag because they consider it a pagan symbol. They do not wear crosses or any kind of jewelry. And they say that Jesus was not crucified on the cross, but he was hanged on a stick. They do not submit to any earthly government and they do not join the army. They forbid to have friends outside Jehovah's Witnesses or to marry someone outside Jehovah's Witnesses or to work for someone who is not a Jehovah's Witnesses member. They do ministry door to door, they forbid the blood transfusion and they also forbid any kind of celebrations like Christmas, Easter or even birthdays because they consider it also pagan practices. Now you can see on the screen more references if you want to dig deeper on the topics that we cover today. Thank you for watching, pray for us, and see you next time. Bye.